Do you know what's really weird about GPT-40, uh, OpenAI's new GPT model? Welcome back to the Idea Supply Chain, where we take a look at where ideas come from and what makes those ideas valuable. In today's video, I just wanted to talk briefly about a bit of an oddity I noticed uh, regarding GPT-40. So there have been two very, very different camps that I've seen on Twitter when talking about GPT-40. One of them is that GPT-40 got terrible at writing code, completely unable to write code, has screwed up all of the code, bla code base generation workflows, just made it completely unworkable. And that honestly felt really weird to me because one of the things that I noticed when I switched over to it is something that I was using to generate code that wasn't working for me automatically started working when I switched over to GPT-40. And so I was like, huh, that's really weird. And then I started to see other people saying like, oh no, actually GPT-40 is great at writing code. And so to me, I, I don't have any answers as to why this is, but I've got a couple theories and most of it comes down to prompting and how well people actually say what exactly they want to generate. And so Typically, when I'm generating code with some sort of large language model, I'm telling it as specifically as I can what I want it to do. I have a very clear vision in my head as to what I want, and I don't want it to necessarily have a lot of variation in what it generates. And so this is kind of the structure that I had set up that says, okay, this is um, what I want, now generate it. And I think GPT-40 did a better job of giving me exactly what I asked for when I asked for it. So then the counterpoint of that is, if it's giving me exactly what I want when I ask for it, and other people are complaining, I think those people maybe aren't saying exactly what they want. Maybe they're leaving a lot of room for interpretation, and there's a lot more kind of white space around what it is they're looking for. And so they're not getting stuff that actually adheres to the best programming principles because there's a lot of wiggle room there. And I've seen this with a lot of prompting, honestly. Uh, most of the time when you really have it narrowed down into what exactly you're asking for, there shouldn't be a ton of variation when you switch out models. Um, it's when you're kind of vague about what you want and you want the LLM to do most of the work of figuring that out. That's really where the large variations happen. And so my guess is that with GPT-40, it's much better at narrowing in on exactly what you want when you ask for it and not as good at just coming up with what you wanted on the fly in the way that maybe the older GPT-4 version was. And over time, I think you're going to see this be more and more the case as these more advanced models come out. It's going to be more and more important to ask for exactly what you're looking for so that you're able to get something out that functions the way you want it to. I've always said that the biggest benefit to using these models is to know exactly what you're looking for. You, you have to know the questions you want to ask. The questions are the most valuable piece. Everybody's asking all sorts of questions from the LLM, but in order to really drill down the right way, you have to know what it is you're asking about. Um, and it's one of the great ironies of all of this. In order to truly evaluate the output of an LLM, you have to be an expert in what you're asking about, because if you're not an expert in what you're asking about, you don't know how to differentiate between a good answer and a bad answer. And so you're more likely to accept a bad answer than a good answer simply because you don't have the knowledge or expertise to differentiate between the two. Um, and so I think prompting can actually be done to really narrow down exactly what people are allowed to ask for. You can do a lot of kind of self-checking in terms of the process. 
And as I've been building out submines, that's the entire reason there. I want a submine who is an expert in a given piece of information so that it can self-validate its answers before it gives them and make sure that it's able to truly be effective in place of having someone who actually knows what they're talking about prompting the LLM, because that's going to be the most vital key in providing uh, repeatable, valuable results. So that's my guess for what's happening there. But anyway, I just thought I'd share that because it was a bit odd. I'd noticed it. Um, and so wanted to, to share that with you and some thoughts. So anyway, that's it for today. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.